the high seas, high seas. Cast my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hi everybody, welcome to your August 2018 readings with me. Uh, so I wanted to record a little bit of an intro video. I'm going to try my best not to make it too long, guys, but you know me. I love talking to you. So this month's videos are a bit different. I'm using my Triple Goddess Tarot deck, and I'm only using this except for in Gemini's video because Gemini had the, the most views last month, so I did pull a few extra cards for the Gemini reading, but this is what the box looks like. A lot of people ask me about this deck. Um, I got it at a spiritual shop in the mall. But very, very cool imagery, and I have never seen anyone else use it. So it's the Triple Goddess deck. If you want to look for the author, it's going to be listed in the description if you guys are interested in this tarot deck. I think it's a really nice deck. So anyways, guys, as far as the reading goes, the readings go this month, um, they're very intuitive. I don't have any kind of setup, which is kind of strange for me, especially when Virgo season is this close. I usually have uh, some sort of more detailed layout, but I wanted to just flow. Another cool fact about this month's readings is that I'm using reversals. This this deck is uh, very very cool for reversals because the the back of the cards, no matter what way they're fa what way they're sh uh, faced, they're the same imagery kind of. So I used uh, reversals this month, which opened up a whole new can of worms, a whole new world. Um, you know, I do reversals sometimes, but I've never really done them as far as my um, personal readings or I've never done them in my monthly re readings, but if a card comes out and it's reversed, of course I'm going to read it as reversed. But um, yeah, uh, this this time there's cards that are actually in reverse in my, as I shuffle them in the deck, not that they just fall out and turn reverse themselves. So reversals this month, you guys, uh, which is really unique because these cards have completely different meanings when they're in reverse. So I have opened up reversals for this month, so that's a cool fact. Other than that, um, there's I have a six card spread basically the three three cards for the first couple weeks of the month, and then three cards for the the last half couple weeks of the month. So yeah, guys, um, definitely interesting energy coming out so far for August. I have not recorded all the entire videos yet as I record this intro, but so far there, there's a lot of energy that I feel in the readings. There's a lot of hard messages coming out, and I think that's because this month is mainly experienced with the like seven planets retrograde we have so many planets in retrograde pushing us to like reflect and reflect on all these hard different areas of our life Saturn's retrograde Chiron Neptune I believe Mars and uh, I think Pluto's still retrograde and uh, Jupiter went direct and Venus went direct so there you go the only two planets that are direct right now are oh, and Mercury's retrograde too of course Mercury is about to go direct though guys um, in a few days around the 19th I believe so uh, we'll have to get through the shadow period of that, but there is seven planets retrograde with only two planets straight up, which is Venus and Jupiter. Oh, and Neptune's retrograde too. So there, I must have named all the planets now. The only two direct, as I've already mentioned, is Venus, who's in Libra. So as far as, uh, you know, August goes, you guys, this is Virgo and Leo energy. Hopefully you like my, my little Leo theme here. I put on my cheetah bathing suit for the theme. Um, so yeah, the mo most of this month I believe belongs to Leo. I believe September is Virgo's month because we go into to September in Virgo season. We go into August in Leo season. So as I've mentioned in my my new moon video, there there was an eclipse in Leo this month on the 11th. We've had three eclipses this month, you guys. Three, well, not this month, but we had a uh, eclipse in Cancer, lunar, solar. I think it was solar, lunar, solar. And uh, as the Leo King mentioned, we have not had that happen since 2011, I believe, maybe 2009. It's been a few years. It's been a, this is very rare for us to have three eclipses. Usually we only have two. Sometimes we have four, but three is very rare. So it's kind of like a trinity. If you ask me, I feel like Cancer, Aquarius, and Leo are up to something since those were the three signs involved with the eclipses energy. But yeah, guys, we just got through... As I record this, it's uh, August fifteenth. We have we have got gotten through the um, the major eclipse energy, which is super 
sudden changes, new beginnings and endings. Eclipses can cause all these random energies in your life. Now, eclipses are cycles of six. So um, these can affect us up to the six, six, six months. And we're dealing with the North Node in Leo and the South Node in Aquarius, which are going to be there until mid-November, I believe. So this is very much opening up you know, doors to past lives, you guys, and, and, and things about the life we're about to enter. This is the North Node and the South Node. I'm going to have videos coming out about that. But guys, these, these eclipses fall on the North and South Node pathways. So, you know, the next series of eclipses we're going to have are going to be in Cancer and Capricorn. So Cancer, Capricorn, get ready uh, for this eclipse energy um, and for, for the moons, North and South Nodes to enter your sign. So as I was saying, guys, this month is shared by Leo and Virgo energy. So Leo energy is all about, it's the fifth house, right? So we go into August with this fifth house energy of pleasure. Leo is all about pleasure. Leo is ruled by the sun. So for the first half of August, we are under the influence of the sun in integrity. The sun is very, very comfortable in Leo. The sun rules Leo, right? So this is about the center of our galaxy, the center of our universe, right? Who we are, almost like ego a little bit. We, we know like Leos are the, the prideful lions. So, you know, this is about who we really are. Leo is about authenticism, authenticity. So this is about our heart's true desires. And this is the North Node, you guys. So this is the sun passing over the North Node. This is Mercury retrograde in Leo. You know, we had at one point around the 11th, we had the moon and the sun and Mercury in the North Node all together as a stellium. So Leo energy is very important. Leo energy has been important and will be important up until November. Leo energy is always important, but it's it's just really highlighted in our universe right now with the sun being there, ruling Leo, ruling awareness and happiness and warmth and light and the inner child and, you know, like I said, the heart. So, you know, this month is really about our heart's desires and this the new moon, which is one of the major things happening in the, this month in Leo is uh, very important for setting new intentions. I have a whole video about the new moon, so if you wanna check that out, that that's in my videos. Um, but as far as August, guys, I just know that, you know, we had Venus and Virgo for most, for the first, we went into August with Venus and Virgo, I believe. Venus just now entered Libra. It's gonna be there for the, for the all of August, and it will eventually move into Scorpio. Um, Mercury is retrograde. Uh, Saturn, I'm sorry, Jupiter has went direct. Uh, all the retrogrades are really important for this month because, like I was mentioning, this is definitely things coming back up from the past. When we have seven planets in retrograde, it's nearly in, this is retrograde city, just like the Leo King says. Um, I've been watching him a lot lately. Um, we have a full moon. Holy crap. Can't forget to mention that, guys. Uh, I'm just trying to be a little bit brief here because I am making some changes that I'm, I'm going to talk to you about here in a bit. Uh, but there is a full moon in Pisces at the end of the month, guys. This is very important. I'm not going to talk too much about that right now because you know me. I'm always going to have videos for the Pisces full moon and or for full moons and new moons and eclipses and stuff like that. So please keep an eye out for my Pisces full moon video where I, I'm going to pull... Uh, a tarot card for all the 12 signs as far as guidance and then you know I'll just channel some stuff about Pisces energy and the full moon energy so yeah guys new moon in Leo this month full moon in Pisces at the end of the month uh, Mercury retrograde Venus and Virgo moved into Libra uh, Mars is moved into Capricorn uh, where it's exalted Mars was in Aquarius Mars was featured in that, that full moon uh, eclipse in Aquarius last month. Now it's back in Capricorn, um, and it'll be there for a while, and then it'll move, go back into Aquarius. It'll head back into Aquarius as it goes back direct. Um, and then, you know, Jupiter, I mentioned, is back back direct, which is really awesome. Um, in Scorpio energy, so this is definitely, uh, you know, this is our fortune. This is expansion moving forward now. It's always good to have a planet back so there's going to be this Neptune and, and Jupiter trine going on this month, too. There, that's another thing I wanted to mention is, is this month, uh, especially in the beginning of the month, there was a lot of squares. Like, if you guys watch the planets, if you if you deal with Planet Watcher, um, there was the sky. Look, you can actually pull up a picture of the sky, and the sky looked nuts. I mean, there was all these red lines and squares. Oh, it was definitely... A, a nice visual of what actually is going on lots of squares squares are, are really really harsh energies that 
you know, they just kind of, they need to compromise. You need to meet halfway with squares. So we had a lot of squares, guys. And, um, you know, I'm sure we're all feeling this kind of jarring energy. We're feeling very, very conflicted and, you know, confused. But, you know, this energy is going to pass, you guys. Virgo energy is coming in this month, okay? So we're going to spend the first half of the month really assessing our true heart's desires, stepping into this the, the new version of ourselves that Leo is showing us. This has to do with our destiny and where we're going in life with the North Node. So you want to follow your true heart's direction. And then, you know, at the, last, at the second half of the month, we move from this fifth house energy collectively to this sixth house energy, which is health. The health of our universe is going to come up. The lifestyle we're all living collectively. The service we offer others. This is Virgo. And Virgo is good with details, okay? Virgo is this earth energy. We haven't had earth energy since Taurus. So this has been a few months here without earth. So this is all going to ground, you know, uh, the the passion that we're feeling. And all, even some of us are feeling angry and just kind of wired and like, I don't know, jet lagged, whatever you want to call it. Like we have all this energy, but no drive. Um, but Mars is going to help with that. And then, you know, Virgo is going to come in and ground all this for us and logically analyze, you know, what's real about our lifestyle. I like Virgo. You know, I'm a Pisces. Virgo is my opposite sign. This is a seventh, the seventh house for, for Pisces. And again, guys, in the videos, I'm going to be breaking down where Leo is for all of you guys independently and where Virgo is. So we've got fifth house and sixth house energy, which means we're experiencing the cusp of exposure, exposure this month. So the Leo Virgo cusp is the cusp of exposure. So this cusp is obviously going to expose some deep, deep things about our lifestyle and about our pleasures and about um, maybe our hidden pleasures and how fun our lifestyles actually are or aren't. Um, but the cusp of exposure can expose anything. You know, anytime anything moves from Leo to Virgo, it goes through the cusp of exposure. That might be something that you want to look up, especially if you're born around the 17th and the 25th of August. This is that really heavy exposure energy where things are going to come up to the surface and, you know, really weird times, you guys. Um, but as a Pisces, my advice is always to, to go with the flow and you know, to just kind of take it easy as the universe sorts some of this stuff out, okay? The universe has gone through a lot of changes, too. A lot of people don't realize that the universe has a body, too, a mind, a heart, a head, a, a purpose, a desire. So these things are all working themselves out as above, so below, the universe within us, us within the universe. So, you know, I just, I think we should just look forward to some of the details becoming more grounded at the end of the month. And um, like I said, that, that cusp of exposure that the sun's going to go through and the moon and, you know, the moon becoming full in Pisces at the end of the month, which wraps up our whole entire zodiac. And then we start fresh with a new full moon in Aries next month when Libra season comes in. You know, we're, we're at August, guys. Uh, it's it's kind of nuts, but... Um, yeah, uh, and also I just want to mention here before I end the video and head into the, the readings, guys, I think I'm going to start doing things a little bit differently. Um, I'm not really sure if it's necessary anymore to have, you know, intros in my videos. I don't know, guys. I might record very short intros like, hey, guys, welcome to your video. See you. Bye. But as far as the astrology that I go into, um, I've had a lot of signs from my personal spirit, guys, to just kind of switch that up. I'll be able to get my videos a lot, out a lot earlier, a lot sooner. It's these intros that kind of, you know, keep me from having my videos out at the beginning of August. I always have my videos come out like mid end of the month. And it's like, why does anyone want to hear about August when, you know, my July videos were really late too. I didn't get many um, people watching those messages. So I think it's just best if I start recording my astrology videos separately. So for those of you who, who really like hearing about, you know, different planets and where they're, those are at. I'm going to start uploading separate astrology videos about Jupiter and Neptune and Mercury and retrogrades and squares and all that. That way I can kind of fully focus on astrology in one area and then I can focus on tarot here. So I think in September I'm really going to start that, guys, where um, when you click on my video, there's no longer an intro. You just get right in and I'm going to try not to talk too much about astrology because there's some people who really just don't have the time to li listen to my videos for hours. All my videos are like hours long. So there is some changes coming to my channel, guys. Um, and I just think that's for the best. But for those of you who really do like astrology, that's still going to be available for you. I'm still open for personal readings. Um, thank you so much to those who have donated and who have um, helped me out. 
by just supporting my channel. As you guys know, some of you who have watched me for a while now, I don't work in the physical world as of right now. Uh, who knows? I might in the future, but for a while now, I've just really been diving into my own creative, spiritual Pisces second house. Uh, my my resources come from very spiritual things. So I just want to personally thank all of you who reach out to me and trust me with your spiritual guidance. It means the world to me. This is something I'm very passionate about. So thank you guys for watching. And those of you who have su subscribed and supported me, it means so much. Welcome to all the new watchers. Um, all the the cross watchers and people who are new watching for the first time i hope you enjoy and without further ado let's jump in to your personal readings guys bye hey sagittarius welcome to your august 2018 reading so before i start the reading guys i just had to like chat a little bit so please be prepared to like just fast forward a little bit like i'll put a timestamp um below because i just have to like kind of explain a little bit about what's going on so I'm actually like I'm doing your reading right now um, I like to do my readings when I'm alone because of the messages that come out guys like you know I just think they're very personal and so I like to be alone and um, I also like there to be kind of bright lighting so that the cards can be seen and stuff so I have a lamp which is cool yay fun fact um, but anyway yeah so I'm kind of doing, I'm squeezing your reading in right now, and, um, because I just want to get the messages out to you guys, like, I just kind of feel really called to do the reading, and so, um, there was a bunch of people around me, and, you know, I'm not going to go do a reading, um, I don't like to do readings unless I can focus, unless I feel, like, um, very connected, and, like, there's quiet around me, so, you know, this is one of those times where I'm kind of just going to push forward, um, towards the end, there, we might get, like, interrupted a little bit if you hear, you know, people or anything like that, or my dog. But, um, I'm pretty deep, and, you know, Sagittarius, you and I are both ruled by, um, Jupiter, Pisces and Sagittarius. So, there might be a few things that you just understand about my energy right now. Um, I just feel, it just, it really reminds me of you, you know, I'm, I'm, doing videos this month and it's kind of interesting how I'm doing the videos like I wound up doing the Scorpio video at nighttime which was kind of symbolic and now I'm doing the Sagittarius video I was going to do your video last night but um it was just meant to happen today but yeah like I feel like the way that I feel right now is going to help me basically like get in tune with your reading because I feel a lot like how you must feel all the time like I just feel <laughs> jerry like is your life basically just some sort of magical rush because i do kind of feel like a rush energy like and i'm gonna do my best to actually be a pisces during this reading and like not rush your 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 reading but i feel like this is a special reading and i hope a lot of you are like kind of drawn to watch it because this month it, it might be the pisces full moon at the end of the month but i'm really like forming into the signs you know when i I'm feeling the energy more intensely than ever when I'm recording this month. You know, every time I sit down and record to a sign, I really open my channel up to kind of like, it's a Pisces thing, but I like kind of become that energy, you know, just to like really get, you know, a good feel on what's going on. And, and that's just really, I feel like it's a mutable sign thing. So you might understand that too. I'm going to mute that so it doesn't happen again. So my voice is like really raspy um, for lots of reasons. So sorry guys, I'm, I'll try to like not make it so raspy, but I'm, I am going to light this incense, which is always good for a fire sign. And that's a moon incense there. So that Pisces full moon that I just kind of mentioned there, that's something kind of interesting for you. It's going to happen on the 26th, I believe, or the 27th. And Pisces is your fourth house, Sagittarius, so that's a lot of emotion about home and family and stuff like that. Um, but I am going to be having a separate video. I always have full moon, new moon videos, so just be on the lookout for that video. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about Leo and Virgo because that's what August is centered around. Um, Leo is your ninth house, which is a really cool house, Sagittarius. That's probably why your energy kind of feels how it does in August like I feel like this is a lot of energy you guys must have a lot of energy to deal with all the time and like I feel like running really fast like to get this energy out of me or something because I'm not I'm like a sluggish person you know I'm real slow moving and 
I have a Taurus moon, so I'm real, like, kind of chill. This is an exciting energy, and it's like an adventurous energy. And, you know, I knew that I was drawn to do your video right now for a reason, because of what I feel. I feel like it's like a bunch of, it's just magical, and so much is happening. And another thing I wanted to mention is, like, I had kind of a choice between take a shower. I just like to do things in isolation, so while these people are gone, I'm like, should I take a shower? And I'm like, you know what? No, I'm actually going to do the Sagittarius video, which is kind of interesting. So there might be something here about like being too busy to even take a shower even. Like, do you guys deal with that a lot? Like just, you know, feeling rushed and at the same time magical and at the same time everything's so, so visionous and like, Jesus, I don't even know. But this is like a secret here between you and me right now, Sag. I definitely feel your energy and I would love to talk to you more about it because I would love to feel this, you know, more often. But I know it's a blessing and a curse. But anyway... All of that could definitely be empowered by the Leo ninth house. Um, the ninth house is you, you know what I mean? So Gemini is going through third house stuff. Leo is the third house of Gemini, and Leo is the ninth house of Sagittarius. So you are the ninth house. What is the ninth house? It's about beliefs, you know, a higher philosophy and knowledge and education. It's, it's a very, very almost scientifical alchemy energy. You know, because to learn, you have to approach things like a scientist. You have to approach things like a, um, an alchemist. Like, you got to try stuff new sometimes. You have to t go out on a limb. And I guess that's that adventurous energy I'm feeling from you. So I'm not real sure why. I'm not sure the significance for each and every one of you. Why um, the energy of your video is going to be like this today. But I'm actually really interested in, in some of the messages that come out for you. And Virgo, Sagittarius, is um, your 10th house. So basically, long story short, first half of the month is going to be all about learning and even education, expansion, philosophy, your beliefs. You had a new moon there this month, so lots of new intentions, new beginnings, sudden endings and beliefs and educational matters, anything that can expand. I mean, this is... I think of the ninth house as the biggest, I know the houses are all the same size, but the ninth house has this energy of being bigger than everything else because it's the house of expansion. And when you expand, you can always expand, you know, you can always expand beyond limits. And so, you know, Jupiter is the largest planet there. So Jupiter, Jupiter is the, like, you're ruled by the largest planet of the, the solar system. So there's, there's this energy, you know, this month for you about you expanding your happiness, you expanding your authentic self and learning more about what you believe about your authentic self and what you believe about your heart. Just lots of stuff like that, Sag. It seems really fucking cool. And, um, you know, I don't want your video to be too long. I don't want to, like, go on and on. But, you know, I just feel real connected to you guys. And that's why I, I talk um, for a while to you. But I know these are, like, tarot videos, so people are interested in the messages. But Virgo is the 10th house. Last couple weeks of August are going to be about your career. So it's going to be... First half of the month is beliefs, and it, it kind of shifts into this more serious energy, okay? So there's something you need to learn at, in the beginning of August that is essential to your growth as far as your long-term goals and, you know, your your legacy and your future. So hopefully you understand that, Sag. And I already mentioned the Pisces full moon. I think that's it astrology-wise. Um, I'll probably just come out with other videos talking about astrology for those of you who are interested in, in the houses and stuff. So let's go ahead and start shuffling, Sag, and see what kind of energy is coming out for you in August. So this is for Sagittarius, the mutable fire sign. I mean, I just feel a pretty magical vibe, honestly, and we'll, we'll see what all this is about. So let's, let's see, Spirit, what's going on for Sagittarius in August 2018? Let's get them a six-card spread. What was that one? Mm. Well, this card kind of kept kind of sliding out of my hand there. So this is judgment. <sighs> judgment. Sagittarius portals, you know. I mean, look at these heavenly doors, I mean, opening for you this month in August. It's like the light is opening. There's there's openings of the light available for you. And this this reminds me of the light of the ninth house, you know, the sun's light which is your authentic shine, you know what I mean? And at the bottom of the deck, we have the High Priestess. And when I was shuffling your cards before I started recording, this this came out, Sagittarius. The High Priestess is a very special card, one of my my absolute all-time favorite card, actually. And it's an all-knowing energy. 
So for this to be at the bottom of the deck when the judgment kind of slips out, it's definitely a spiritual calling or a spiritual awakening linked to certain secret knowledge that you're gaining in September. I'm, ooh, I don't know why I said September. It must be going on in September too. But in August, at the beginning of the month mostly, and at the, it's like the, be the beginning of the month is, is lift off. And there's this flight of stairs here, you know what I mean? So this is definitely about climbing, and that's you as you mo move into that 10th house. So this is a combination of the 9th house and 10th house energy that you're going through this month, Sagittarius. And you're definitely climbing spiritual heights um, to light and awareness, to enlightenment. There's just a fly right there. That's interesting. Um, and linked to the high priestess, this this is something secret. This is something going on inside you, you know, in a secret realm. I mean, this is what happens when you go through ninth house stuff. So definitely a spiritual awakening, some sort of... For some of you, this could manifest as a second opportunity. Because the judgment card, in a platonic way, does mean, you know, second chances. Like something was dying, something was... Something did die, and then all of a sudden there's this spiritual renewal. There's this spiritual... This is like Pluto energy and Neptune energy, which are very outer planets, I would say. Very... Kind of those more, more mysterious... This is Scorpio and Pisces energy, basically. Um, so I'm not sure if that's significant for you. And we do have the, the Devil card at the bottom of the deck here. So it could be linked to a specific Capricorn, or it could be linked to something karmic, something you know, coming back from the past, or, you know, the devil card, it does mean, for some of you, we have to talk about, you know, manipulation and toxicity, drinking, drugs, alcohol, anything can be an addiction, but I like this devil card, a lot less scarier than, you know, how the darkness has been portrayed, you know, we have all these horned figures, you know, I don't believe in demons like that, demons are as real as you and me, if you want to see a demon, look yourself right in the mirror. Honestly, look yourself right in the eye of your darkness and you will see, you know, the parts of your own self. So I don't want to blame the, the devil energy anymore on, you know, outside influences. This is a very internal energy. It's a very mental energy, just like any addiction or, or toxic, chained, codependent situation is. But as I was saying, I like this card better because it shows someone who's walking away. This is a very old, wise woman walking away from... If she has to walk for, away from a home, she'll walk away from a home. If she has to walk away from her her materialistic pleasures or her, you know, her her stability, anything anything in her real world, anything in her home environment, her relationships, you know, she is walking somewhere else. So this could be you walking away from toxicity, but this could be as simple as a Capricorn, a second chance with a Capricorn or a second chance with a karmic relationship or you know, and we have the Wheel of Fortune to tell me even more so that this is about this energy changing for you. This is karmic for sure. And this is very linked to your destiny, Sagittarius. And I, I feel that there's just a walking towards that. You know, I know this is the devil card, but I'm looking at the pictures because of the state of mind I'm in right now. And uh, I see a woman who's walking towards the Wheel of Fortune. So you're walking towards change. And you know what, guys? The Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter. So we've got some planets showing up here for you, specifically Pluto and Jupiter. And then I kind of picked up on the, the Neptune vibe with, um, you know, that could also be the moon, though. The moon, Neptune, Pluto, and Jupiter. So I want you guys, if, those of you who know your birth charts, please look at those placements, like where your moon is, where your Neptune is, and allow, allow some information to be expanded there, okay? But main story here is that you guys are really walking towards change and expansion. And this is a ninth house transit for you, so definitely... Definitely. And, you know, we have the King of Wands here with the Magician. So this is a magical fucking reading. Just like I said. You know, you guys might not be feeling very abundant, especially if you're pregnant. I have the Empress in reverse here on, on this side of the deck here. She's in reverse. So that could be you, you know, doing all this um, because you're trying to get back into that space of abundance. It's, you know, Sagittarius, you're, you're supposed to feel expanded. You're supposed to feel like and like there's an infinite amount of resources you know you guys have capricorn as your second house like that's like one of the best houses to have as a second house because you know you're really good good with like finances and stuff most of the time but there are times when you know you're not really feeling abundance in your within yourself or you're not feeling very sagittarius you're not feeling very you know sexy beautiful whatever but this is the magician 
you know, I'd rather have the Empress in reverse than the Magician. This is Mercury showing up for you now. So definitely planets, 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 Jupiter, Mercury, Pluto, the moon, Neptune. There's something here, but the main message here is about you. You know, I'm seeing books here. We've got books and writing. So this is a student energy. This is a like philosopher energy. We've got this, the King of Wands there with that book open, writing. You know, this is expressing yourself by writing things down and like a scientist, like an alchemist. And then we have all the books here with the cup and the wand and the pinnacle and the sword. So even when you're not abundant, Sagittarius, you're supposed to still know that Jupiter has your back. You know what I mean? Saturn has your back. There's lots of planets here. So it could have to do with an Aries in, in, in an individual because we have the Emperor in reverse. These are two Aries energies in reverse. So there's something here about Aries energy in reverse um, or Libra energy in reverse or Taurus energy in reverse. So that was a little bit of channeling there. Now I'm just going to try to get your reading out because the judgment card didn't come out all the way. Ooh, okay. I definitely need to focus because we got the Eight of Wands in reverse, Three of Swords in reverse. So there is something here um, about a Libra and a Scorpio. There's a Libra and a Scorpio energy reaching out, maybe even a Leo. Eight of Wands in reverse with the Three of Swords in reverse. There could be some sort of message that's not coming in, some sort of communication. Now this, for some of you, you're not communicating from your heart um, because of some sort of betrayal. Or, but this is you coming out of heartbreak too because of a lack of a message so that's interesting Sag maybe this lack of message is is ultimately the best for you you know but this is interesting and this is this card reminds me of you this is the eight of wands um and upright this is energy coming in very fast you know what I mean some kind of information through a message or a text message you know ninth house stuff and here's a this could be a message from you so Sagittarius might not be you know you guys are healing so you're not talking there might be somebody who you're not communicating with anymore or things are just slowing down with because, you know, uh, you're healing. It could have been a third party situation or some sort of heartbreaking, whether it's you or the other person, Sag. Um, this is a big old chunk of a message here. So first we had the Eight of Wands in reverse with the Three of Swords in reverse and then the Knight of Pentacles with the Justice card. So I'm not sure if there's a significant Libra involved that's um, very linked to slow. We have two messages here about slow energy, which is never good for fire, never good for Sag. Who wants to deal with slow motion when you're already like just drank seven coffees? Like that's how Sagittarius feels, whether the coffee is a metaphor or not. You know, it's just having a bunch of energy and being told to slow down, like, or, you know, the universe slowing you down. Or just having to be patient. You know, you guys are the temperance card. So that, that is about being patient during your alchemy. You know, I wish I could tell every scientist and every philosopher to just be patient while you while you figure this out. Sagittarius is a figure it out energy. You guys have to test a bunch of different stuff in order to kind of, and that's a part of being a, the mutable fire. Okay, so there's a lot of coming through me here, Sagittarius, for your reading. I kind of feel, felt that. But um, Knight of Pentacles in reverse could be an earth sign, Libra energy. It could be a job situation, but it's out of balance with the Justice card in reverse. Um, if you're dealing with a Libra, you should watch their video because they were they came out like that too. Um, so yeah, something's just not balanced anymore, and it's taking way too long. It could be an, um, an injustice in a financial department or some sort of monetary, financial linked situation. But we've got the Justice in reverse here. It could be with a Libra, though. Some heartbreak, heartbroken Libra or Sagittarius is just feeling heartbroken and, and not balanced. Something is not fair, you know? The fact that these two energies are taking so long to arrive. And then we have the death card in reverse. So some sort of Scorpio linked to it for some of you. Or just, you know, the inability to, trans to, transform, to transform right now. The, the, the judgment card did come out. So there is an energy here about something not being dead, Sagittarius. I don't know what that means for you guys, but it's not dead. I'm hearing it's not dead. It's not dead yet. So I don't know what that's going to mean for all of you. Like maybe you're not dead yet. You know, like you're still alive, Sagittarius. You can still do this. Um, you know, so I don't know. And then we have the Five of Wands in reverse, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Four of Cups in reverse. So to me, this is like... You know, learning how to express yourself around different people, Sagittarius. 
you know, you guys, I have a feeling that you deal a lot with a lot of different energies. You know, at least you're always around at least five different people. And um, they all have different ways of expressing. Now, these people could exist inside you. But this is about you really remaining patient. I do feel an energy of you losing patience, Sagittarius, because we have the this card here, which is like really losing patience and not putting in any more effort if it's not worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, and I think that's linked to some sort of conflict that you're coming out of. Uh, so as you come out of conflict, as you come out of heartbreak, as you look these injustices in the face, you know, you, you walk away from things that just were no longer serving you. And you're no longer in deep contemplation or emotional distraction about this either with this uh, Four of Cups in reverse. Now, there could be some sort of emotional drainage going on there, but, you know. Now, this is a huge message too, Sagittarius. We've got the strength card and the world card so this is telling me that leo is leo season is very karmic for sagittarius there could be a significant leo in your life it's upright so there's some strong worldly changes going on and you're going to need to be courageous and brave now there could be a karmic relationship between a leo and a sagittarius going on for some of you or you just being strong enough to complete cycles we have you here with the fireball in your hands so it's like using the world to strengthen you and to strengthen your fiery magic because that's what I'm picking up for you Sagittarius when I see these cards right now the light the light is coming in to strengthen you the sun's energy the sun's energy something about the sun's energy because we have Leo which is the sun the sun is in Leo and there might be something that Sagittarius does in Leo season which is harnessing their fire now this is the north node energy so this is like your destiny as well um, and it may have something to do with creativity because we have the page of wands and this is a creative endeavor this is a new spark this is you expressing yourself through painting or through some sort of art music writing something doing something with that magic energy sagittarius not just sitting it down and not allowing it to spark something in you because there is something that needs to spark now we have two pages here page of fire page of water so this is like a water energy and a fire energy so hopefully your, you know, water isn't putting your fire out or anything like that. For those of you who are um, dating like emotional water, watery people, maybe Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio energy. But this is also your own emotion, like pouring your heart out, pouring your emotion into some sort of art, you know. Um, and this is for the long run, you know, something that could potentially make some of you money. But for those of you who aren't resonating with that, these are two messages this month in August, a fiery one and a watery one. So there might be, uh, you know, you might not be expressing yourself emotionally is what I'm hearing, Sagittarius, or there might be someone in the situation who isn't expressing yourself emotionally. So you don't know, you know, what to paint, so to speak. You don't know where to go from here. And then we have the Six of Swords in reverse and the Seven of Wands in, in upright. So definitely a need to stand up for yourself and finally leave certain things behind. Because when I see the Six of Swords in reverse this month for people... It's really talking about not being able to move away from uh, waters that are obviously out of control, which is, you know, your emotions being out of control or, you know, just a situation no longer being stable and you deciding to move away mentally and then physically and then emotionally and then spiritually. Upright, that is what this would mean. This would be you moving away to calmer waters, but that's upside down. So there's something that you can't get away from until you stand up for yourself, Sagittarius, until you defend yourself, because there is a need to compete in order to, to get out of something this month. Um, and then we have the Ten of Pentacles, the Seven of Swords in reverse. So this is your family life coming up here. That might be at the end of the month, um, the stability of your home when it comes to the fourth house Pisces moon. Like, I like to see the Seven of Swords in reverse, though, because that that's coming out of betrayal, coming out of, like, theft and like obviously there's something that's no longer stealing from you financially it could be a person place or thing or just the irs or a job related but i like to see less sneakiness going on in the finances in your stability in your home in your family life there's something here linked with that i'm not sure if there was a betrayal in the past linked to some sort of home life but i just feel like this is sagittarius finally unwrapping um things of value Unwrap, unraveling certain issues there and like there might be some something that came to the light last month that's featured in August where you gain even more clarity about the ways you're being taken from you know now we have the two of cups and the knight of cups in reverse 
So this is a specific love offer. Um, like there might be a Pisces some of you are wanting to reconcile with, or there might be just some sort of relationship that you want to kind of come back around. Up, right side up, this would be the reconciliation. Someone coming in to offer love and you guys getting back together. Um, and now this doesn't have to be a person. It could be just a situation that connects you to something else emotionally. You know, two people or two things, a decision. Um, you, some of you might decide not to show emotional action this month and not get back together with, with a certain individual. So these messages are kind of interesting, but what I really want to do is fully paint that picture. So there's something here about fully painting the picture this month, Sagittarius. Fully painting the picture. It's kind of like you have the wand this month, Sagittarius. Well, you had ten of them. But, you know, you drop, you're drop. you dropping the wands that have lost their spark. Now we have the eight of swords in reverse. There's definitely an energy here about you becoming less trapped. You know, I'm, I'm liking, I, I like to see all these negative energies in reverse. We almost had the King of Pentacles come out there. So let's just, I need to really focus. Devil card. Okay. Because my, my energy is, see how that just came out there? Like, that's how the energy is right now. Really big, thick messages coming out. So now there's a significant Scorpio and a Virgo reaching out. Or Sagittarius really needing to head into something unknown in order to transform like these messages you're coming out of mental anxiety night of night of this is you sagittarius the knight of wands moving very quickly and passionately away from something where you're up all night you know what i mean you're not sleeping well this is nightmares this is insomnia but you're coming out of this as the nine of swords is in reverse now we've got some emotional conflict showing up though with a water sign or or about emotions like I'm not sure, but it's the Five of Swords with the King of Cups. So, you know, when it comes to conflict this month, it, it would be best, especially with the Pisces full moon influence, to just kind of handle it in a nurturing way, to handle it in an emotionally mature way. Like, you might need to be emotionally mature enough to walk away from, you know, someone who's really picking petty fights. You know, this is um, laying down your sword and no longer wanting to compete with, like, a narcissist or with, like, Someone who, like, literally just causes you mental anxiety anyways. Now, this might be you, Sagittarius. This might be you uh, either laying down a sword or, you know, making a very strict emotional decision no matter who you hurt. But there's definitely an energy here about not walking away until you defend yourself. Remember, we had the Six of Swords in reverse with the Seven of Wands. Now we have the Nine of Wands upright, which is a wounded card, like fighting a lot of battles this month. And, and being okay with fighting another one if you have to, like, I'm always ready. But um, the Eight of Cups in reverse is, like, not walking away from something that's emotionally draining or manipulative. or So there's something here, Sagittarius, about, you know, either taking a, standing up for yourself and fighting for yourself, defending yourself this month. Um, it could be a Mars-related energy. And you just kind of not being able to walk away until you do that. Like, you might have that feeling, like, you know, I don't want to give up on this and... That's a Sagittarius thing. Like, you guys can get pretty fiery. So it's like, no, I'm going to prove my point right now. Like, Sagittariuses can, they are fiery sometimes. I love you, sassy fire Sagittariuses. Sassy Tariuses. But yeah, you know, there's a defensive energy here. And I'm, I'm promoting it. Like, I think you guys need to, to defend yourself again in a certain job or some kind of situation. And it's linked to your emotions. And then when we have the hanged man in reverse. The hanged man in reverse has been coming up for all kinds of people this month. And I think there's a metaphor here about the world being upside down because this is the hangman in reverse. Like the hangman is already, you know, upside down. And then it's even more interesting when it's in reverse. So this is you like, the, for some of you, you might really need to try to see something in a different way, especially if it's some sort of crossroads or some sort of decision. Now, this is a retrograde energy. So retrograde energy definitely turns things upside down, loopy doopy. So just know there's a lot of um, reflecting right now uh, on things in a different way. Retrogrades make you think about paths that you've taken in your life in a different way. There's some sort of enlightened path here that, that needs to be traveled down. All because of the inaction emotionally. Because we have two knights here. The the water knight is upside down and the earth knight is up right up. So, you know, this is patience again. Definitely having patience for some sort of love offer to come in. Having patience for that romance, Sagittarius, that a lot of you guys want. Having patience for an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or for some sort of financial proof of something. Because the Knight of Pentacles is coming with real proof. 
He's coming to give you something that you really need in, as far as your physical earthly realm. But the Knight of Cups is in reverse, meaning that there might not be emotional action. Like maybe, maybe you don't need to take action emotionally right now. You need to take action physically in order or in order for things to be balanced because that's when justice is right side up that's when this libra is right side up that's when you're able to see something balanced in a truthful way and that's when the eight of wands comes in your fast forward movement all your arrows being shot in the same direction hearing back finally about this heartbreaking situation but still the the lack of this reconciliation for some of you is is jupiter blocked like jupiter might be cock blocking some of you now that he is <laughs> back direct because love is a distraction for Sagittarius I'm hearing and there's something that some of you guys are interested in people that aren't contributing to your growth and because of Jupiter being in your 12th house of Scorpio uh this is about spiritual expansion for you and you know some of you guys are really walking down the path of spiritual expansion and there's people that don't resonate with you because of that there's people you are quickly quickly outgrowing like Sagittarius is quickly outgrowing certain environments people places and things right now like constantly just that's a mutable sign thing constantly changing and we are headed into that mutable sign energy the hangman came out for you again uh virgo and the pisces full moon is going to bring that mutability back sagittarius and um you know you're going to be feeling feeling that the your abilities to change your the sun in virgo is going to really show you guys the abilities to change you know especially in the career page of cups at the bottom of your deck with the judgment card right underneath that so there's definitely something going on here with that sagittarius but before we get into it into it i really just i feel like hopefully my sagittarius is that watch this feel me like i'm really tapping into the energy of sag collectively um today and the moon is about to head into sagittarius probably around the 18th but <sighs> sag hopefully y'all just get it i'm changing subjects a lot like i just hope you guys um like the reading but anyway yeah i'm gonna try to focus here and um just kind of speak about this as we go and just see what's coming up because i just see a lot but we we go into august because this could very well be the first two weeks of august last two weeks of august but keep in mind these energies can happen anytime anywhere any place at any any anything any anywhere it could happen in different ways for different people but we have the first card out was the ten of wands in reverse so there is a need here to let others pick up their own slack like you might be dropping some weight um dropping certain burdens or just needing to now this is a fire energy and it's a 10, so it is a completion, and it's a completion that speaks directly to you as a fire sign. So yeah, there is a need here to release certain burdens in August because there's too much going on, Sagittarius. These are mental burdens, physical burdens, financial burdens, emotional burdens, spiritual burdens. We can be burdened in a lot of different ways, but I think some of you are just burdened in general with all of the weight that you've had to carry. Like, If there's anything I feel about the energy right now, while I'm talking to you is that you guys are pretty busy people and you have a lot of energy and you, you talk to a lot of different people and even if a Sagittarius stays in, at, inside, even if you stayed indoors for an entire month, the energy you carry is still an energy that speaks to a lot of different, a lot of different particles make up you, Sagittarius, because you're mutable. So as a mutable sign, I definitely feel the need to tell you that to drop certain dead weight, you know what I mean? To drop anything that's tiring you out or exhausting you because if you are exhausted, Sagittarius, something is wrong. Something is wrong because you should not feel exhausted as a Sagittarius. Your energy is ever flowing. You're ruled by Jupiter. You can always expand beyond your, your limitations. So there's something here about expanding beyond limitations as well. We've got two pretty decent cards starting off your deck. Or starting off your reading that talk about you know releasing burdens and then getting out of mental prisons because here you're not seeing certain things you're you're blindfolding yourself to certain thoughts that you've had or to certain truths you know especially regarding a home situation which that's coming up through me because of that fourth house pisces full moon so your home there's something here about feeling feeling trapped at a home environment because we see that home in the distance there something that you need to become aware of about your home and it could definitely be with an Aries because Aries had an energy like that this month too toxicity in their home so you could be walking away from a home environment or walking towards a better home environment in the in the future like you're trapped right now Sagittarius but there's a home environment in the in the future um it just started raining I feel
feel like that's significant. But yeah, you know, this is in reverse. So I think uh, you're finally able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, something is lighting your way in the distance, in the future. This is 10th house energy. You know what I mean? So this might have to do with your 10th house, but it does talk about coming out of mental prisons and feeling trapped. So if there's anything, any situation, relationship, job, whatever, that you felt trapped in, there's some sort of releasing going on here. As far as the weight you were carrying, as far as where you felt trapped at. You know what I mean? Like, look at this little woman. She's walking away from a castle. So there's some really nice home environments here or the lack of. And there's, it's linked to some sort of burden at your home or or some sort of imprisonment. Some of you, there might be someone getting released from prison that you know. Maybe some of you know a Sagittarius getting released from prison. But we have the devil card here again, which also talks about chains and, and, and being trapped. But this is right side up. So certain, certain, certain people watching do need to hear about addictions this month and other people who are addicted, other people who are in jail or... Um, other people who are chained but this is you and i feel like this is you just walking away it's interesting the first three cards have homes in the background a castle and then there's a little home on a hill and then there's a little forest cottage home in this double card here so you know some of it's telling me that some of this is real close to home sagittarius when we go through fourth house energy you know the fourth house naturally squares us so this does talk about you know conflict in the home environment or toxicity or something needing to compromise in the home environment something that needs to meet halfway you know like meet me halfway type of thing so there's something here with that but this is a capricorn energy as well we do have a significant capricorn pisces aries situation um and i say pisces because we have the page of cups and the hanged man in reverse if you guys are dealing with the pisces they might not be on the up and up because they're showing up in reverse in your reading. And then the Aries might not be on the up and up either because the Fool card's in reverse. But this Capricorn's upright. So I'm not sure what that's about, Sag uh, Sagittarius. So, you know, honestly, if I just quiet my brain here for a minute and I just kind of look at these first three cards, I do see someone walking away from a home, definitely. Like, someone's walking away from a home in a burden. Like, there's some sort of burden in your home that is, is getting better because you're you're feeling less trapped less mental anxiety there is light in the future so this is the future like down here eight of swords you know in reverse feeling finally getting a better mentality about something your thoughts finally becoming less anxious but then we have the devil card which i feel means so many different things for so many different sagittariuses if you guys live with a capricorn there's a specific message here Especially if you live with someone who's like kind of toxic and they just kind of wine and dine you with jewels and stuff like that. Like that's not a home. You know, home is where the heart is type of thing. And some of you guys are really going to gain enlightenment about something. Especially with the hanged man here. I don't care if the hanged man is in reverse or right side up. Like he's always gaining enlightenment. Um, and you're becoming unstuck because these are two cards that talk about becoming unstuck. The Hanged Man in Reverse and the Eight of Swords in Reverse. So you are becoming unstuck. Like you're being set free in August, especially towards the end of the month. But you're becoming set free mentally at the beginning of the month. But then you're becoming ultimately, collectively, ex extremely fully expanded at the end of the month. Because the Hanged Man upright sometimes feels like being trapped or stuck. You see how this man is like stuck on a tree? So you were stuck somewhere for a really long time, Sagittarius, that was a heavy burden for you. Um, it, it was really not your new beginning that you wanted. It, it was not a home. I don't care if you guys lived in a mansion. There was something in your home environment. There's something in every Sagittarius's home environment right now that is just more or less a burden that they either have dropped or need to drop or will drop. And this is going to set, set somebody free mentally from toxicity or mentally free from a Capricornian energy mentally free from an addiction or and now we can be addicted to all things sag but the hanged man in reverse is literally the fact that you you finally saw something differently you finally like took the blindfold off you know you're becoming unstuck you're being set free so hopefully i explained that kind of right this is a little crazy like your guys's reading is really interesting and then we have the Fool card in reverse. So there might be something here about, you know, not starting a new beginning, though, or not taking a risk, not taking a leap of faith. 
So, you know, I'm not sure if you just feel like you can't jump, Sagittarius, or that you can't jump into this new thing. But I really feel the need to tell you that you can. You know, um, and then we have the Page of Pentacles. So this is something that you need to take a closer look at financially. It could be in a work situation. If you guys work, um, this is your boss is kind of showing up here, like a Saturnian energy, the authority you have at work. Um, there might be some ideas that you really need to take a closer look at. Fill those pages up with words. Express yourself emotionally. Take a closer look um, at the, the greater details of things. But I do see light coming in. In each of these cards, there's just like a little tent of light coming in. Which, which could be the awareness. It could be all these things. So let's just see if I channel anything else here. Bottom of the deck is the page of cups reversed. So yeah, you guys are releasing an attachment. And I mean, your reading is lit because this is good. You guys are moving in the right direction because we're releasing an attachment. And we're also coming out of despair because the five of cups, these cards right side up are kind of nasty. This is you hanging on to something that's over, hanging on to something sad and depressing and not realizing that there's an opportunity sitting right next to you hanging on to the money you're making at the job you're making now and not having any any room to kind of grow or expand this is you outgrowing your environment Sagittarius like I'm telling you you are no longer clenching on to things because it involves you not being able to grow all of the sadness all of that that's for the birds man that's for the birds that is not for you you know if there's anything about birds they fly Okay, so you guys need to take flight this month and you're releasing something you were attached to, a job, a situation, a person, a place, a thing, and you're releasing this thing that you were attached to, whatever it is, it did make you sad. And so you're releasing that. There's so much here about releasing burdens, emotional burdens, and then like you see the sun in this card, like you're finally seeing something for what it is. And it could have to do with a, with a it could be finances or a Taurus Virgo Capricorn because we have the Ten of Swords here. So there is some sort of painful fight going on here with an earthy energy. Or maybe it's you. You know, maybe you're just not feeling grounded because the Ten of Swords is a completion. We've got two tens in your reading now. And then the, the final. Now look at this though. You guys are going to have to fight for a new beginning. You're going to have to fight to walk away. Like I do feel, I don't like this. I feel a very devilish energy. Something is something is attached to you, Sagittarius, and you need to fight it off and, and jump. Well, there's two fool cards in this deck. So now the fool card is right side up for you, saying you need to fight your way to a new beginning. Fight your way to the cliff and then jump. It's like a nightmare energy kind of. I'm surprised the nine of swords didn't show up. You know? You're, this is this is a warrior card. This is a like some kind of battle like warrior wounded energy. Like this man, this woman or man is wounded, but they will fight again in order to like you might have to fight one more time to start a new beginning. And ultimately, you're gonna have to walk away. And some of you are s extremely walking away from a Capricorn energy because this is the King of Pentacles. Or some of you guys aren't walking away from a Capricorn or a Taurus or a Virgo because the Eight of Cups in Reverse is not walking away again. It's going to be really hard not to walk away around that Pisces full moon, though, because we have the full moon showing up here. And then I know your reading is done now, Sag, because now we have the Sagittarius card. This is the Temperance card. This is your card, which is ultimately saying test new waters, try new magical things, you know, welcome the light of this full moon into your fourth house. The fourth house moons are so powerful because the moon is comfortable in the fourth house. The moon truly is comfortable in the fourth house. That's the Cancer house. The moon is comfortable in the house of our roots, in the house of our deep emotions, in the house of our home, family life, and even the house of our mother. So you're coming out of confusion, Sagittarius, around this full moon. You know, you're, you're coming out of confusion about why certain things aren't working out financially, why certain things aren't working out in your real reality. Very much welcoming the light of that full moon because there's a lot of magic flowing around. You see the magic flowing around you around that full moon this month? So you definitely might want to allow that to... to to inspire you to try and test new things, test new waters, you know. And the two cards I have in my hand that I have not let go of this whole time in my left hand, which is the spirit hand, is the judgment card, which which came out for you in the very beginning, Sag. This is a second chance to express yourself emotionally, express yourself spiritually. Um, you know, some of you might be interested in a second chance with a water sign. But... To me, I'm seeing the judgment card for you this month as doors of opportunity, doors doors to the light, you know, some sort of other realm or galaxy this month, you know, some sort of higher galactic 
otherworldly dimension. But the, I do want to also allow my logical side to to say that the judgment card is renewal, and it's it's like you know something not being dead. It's like you're being reawakened. This is like when someone dies and then like some sort of spirit comes back, and it's like a resurrection is what I just heard. Something's being resurrected from the dead this month, Sagittarius. It's not dead, is what I'm hearing. It's not dead. You're not emotionally dead. You know, but. There is enough, there's these two cards sitting over here that are the Eight of Cups in reverse. Some of you aren't walking away from something financial. Some of you guys are not walking away from a very cold earth sign. Like, I see this fire is you, Sagittarius. Like, some of you guys are doing your best to warm up very, like, non-emotional people. It might not be an earth sign, but it could be someone who's just very materialistic and very, like, kind of grounded and, like, not expressing their emotion, you know? There's an energy here about you or someone else just not really expressing their emotion. And there might be a second opportunity that's linked around that, though, Sag. But, you know, you're going to have to take the risk. Now, I love that you have the full card in reverse here. But there's an underlying energy in your reading that talks about the full and upright. So there are two different risks or maybe a risk that you get to make for a second time, a second opportunity to jump into something brand new, Sag. And, you know, maybe that's why you're getting set free. Because when I start feeling weight lift off of me, when I start feeling freer, I wonder what the universe is preparing me to jump into. Like, what are you, like, when you feel, that's, that's, what I'm feeling right now, Sag, is the energy of you, which is the bow and arrow. You have to pull back on the bow and arrow to be launched, okay? So you're being launched this month into something new. You know, there is a lot of pinnacle energy and earth energy throughout your reading. We've got the... Well, here's something I just saw. We have the Queen of Pentacles in reverse over here, and we have the King of Pentacles upright. So there's a female earth energy, there's a masculine earth energy, but we have two core cards here. See how that's a couple, the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. Some of you could be same sex because um, there's two women, but this is the goddess deck, so there's a lot of women used in this deck. Um, but yeah, King, right side up, Queen not so right up. So this could be some twin flame energy for some of you, some some sort of counterpart, you know, the yin to your yang, so to speak. But that's just kind of, there's a lot going on around you, Sagittarius, which I kind of feel like there always is. Um, but there's a lot here internally, you know, I just really feel like you're ultimately welcoming the full moon at the end of this month. You're welcoming in the mutable energy of Pisces and Virgo, which is going to allow you to change. It's going to bring changes to your life. It's going to change some things up. I mean, real changes, Sag. Like, not little stupid changes like, oh, it's no longer red, it's orange. It's no longer green, it's blue. No, like, I mean different. Like, literally two of wands energy. Like, polar opposite, total new life type of thing. But there is something here that you need to take a closer look at. Maybe you need to take a closer look at where your money is going. Maybe you need to take a closer look at where, where it was that you were stuck before so that you never wind up with those same burdens again, so that you never wind up being trapped in the same way again. Because when you're trapped, it can be kind of fun, you know, it can be kind of like a maze, you know. So whatever maze you were in for however long, it was kind of fun, right? There's some happiness here. It's like maybe there was, I get the sense that you were blindfolded and kind of walking around in a mental maze. And in, in your, your mind for a while, I'm hearing has seemed a bit like a mental maze that you were blindfolded in and that you, you, you know, you literally is like kind of um, the pinata thing where you blindfold somebody and then, you know, they have that stick in their hand, right? And it's interesting, you, you guys are the, the wand energy. So wands, here, here you are with the stick in your hand, the one that you're hitting the pinata with. <laughs> but yeah, like you got a blindfold on and you got spun around 10 times or eight times and then you tr you're trying to find your way back home. Oh, some of you guys are just trying to find your way back home, man. But you're out in the middle of this field mentally. This is all mental and I'm a Pisces, so just kind of bear with me with the physical, metaphorical, creative examples. But that's why it's toxic. You know, I even almost put that right side up. You guys are coming out of that. Like maybe you guys felt lost for a long time. So you're like, you know, literally there was like a, a like a spiritual crash that happened where you were just hanging from a tree. You know, like, this person, like, fell out of the sky, you know? I mean, you are in the sky this month. You are in some sort of otherworldly realm, Sag. 
I mean, this is definitely another worldly realm. You landed in a place that had, like, crystals and fucking mushrooms and shit. <laughs> trippy shit, man. Trippy shit going on. And I don't expect anything else other than that with Sag. You know, but this is about a soul journey that you need to open yourself up to. For sure. You know, because there's something that is ending here. You know, you already started the month off. Like, August was all about you know, the burdens of cycles that are never ending. And you kind of getting out of that. And I just wanted to say a minute ago that there's a few cards I want to point out um, because there's a path. So in the Fool card and in the Ten of Wands, there's a path in the background, right? So this is about a path. And, you know, you might have lost your way on that path, but I'm hearing you lost your way to get back on track. Sometimes when you lose yourself, you find yourself. Isn't that kind of funny? So... Overall, I do see some walking away, Sagittarius, in order to free yourself from burdens and prisons and just feeling stuck overall. Um, oh, this was a, not right up. You're becoming unstuck. See, there's, even me right now, I'm putting some of the stuck cards back right side up on accident. Why am I doing that? Well, maybe Sagittarius feels stuck at certain points in August, but you're not stuck. That is the, I, I can't tell you, there's so many different messages here that just say, just walk away, Sagittarius, just walk away. You know, and let's not forget that the real bottom of your deck was the Page of Cups with the Judgment card right behind it. So, you know, don't worry, you're going to be teleported to where you need to be. You're not going to need to do anything. That's why it didn't matter if you were just hanging around in a tree. That didn't, that's why it didn't matter if you weren't taking the risks that you needed to take. It didn't matter if you were imprisoned because the gates are going to be blown open. Like, even if you guys are in some sort of spiritual prison, I feel like there's some sort of force of light that is coming to, like, basically blow the doors open to the prison. And then you just get magically lift off. Like, this is you getting abducted, basically, by <laughs> some sort of um, spirit of judgment. It could be, it's just your higher self. It's just your higher self, Sag. So let's see if there's anything else here, just to kind of wrap the video up. I'm going to get a drink of water first. Ultimately, I just feel you on the moon mission. You know, you're really embracing the moon's energy. You need to embrace the travels you're going through. And, you know, this video was a little strange, Sagittarius, I know. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm definitely open for personal readings and things like that, um, but this this is a definitely interesting reading. I just think, I think enough has channeled, and that I need to leave this up to you guys. So, you know, really pay attention there to that full moon at the end of the month. It is going to be special for you guys. It's going to be very, very, very special. And um, be on a lookout for my Pisces full moon video, because I'm going to be pulling cards and talking about the moon. And I might even get brave enough to go live for it. Your energy is awesome, Sagittarius. You, of all people, could handle all this going on. And you are free. Thanks for watching, guys.